wonder this morning, are you finding life difficult? Because the devil is attacking you through your family. Sometimes the devil can get at us even, even through our friends. You know, friends lets us down. And when friends let us down, that's when the devil moves in, and the devil friend can create an awful problems. Ah, but then there's your health and there's your home. Psalm 34 verse 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. I wonder this morning, child of God, are you facing oppression? Are you facing opposition this morning? Life's dark. Life for you is difficult. The future, the future's frightening. For mind you, there are many Christians, and life is dark. And life is difficult. And thinking of days ahead and the future frightens. And some believers today, even, they battle every morning. Every morning's a battle as they face a new, a new day. And don't condemn them, dear people, child of God. Don't condemn them. Because the godliest of people can face the greatest of problems. And I wonder, is there someone here this morning? And listen, life for you at this moment is dark. And it's difficult. You don't show it. But you know it. And there's something that frightens you concerning the future. Life, the future, seems uneasy. It's uncertain. Well, the Lord has given me a wee text that's going to bring comfort to your heart this morning. Last Saturday, I was standing at Westminster Bridge in London. And I was talking to my good friend, Alan Carson, concerning this very text. And when I went to the Festival of Remembrance in the Royal Albert Hall, when the bishop got up with the last and he read the Scripture, did he not read the very text that was on my heart? And that's where the Lord confirmed it for this morning. And child of God, if life for you is dark and difficult, and the future is frightening. And the days ahead are uncertain. And they seem uneasy. And you're worried and you're worn out about something. Here's my text. And you take this from the Lord this morning because this is from the Lord. It's Corinthians chapter 4. And it's the last wee phrase that you get down at verse number 5. Here's the text. The Lord is at hand. Child of God this morning, that's the text. The Lord is at hand. Some preachers relate to that text as the, to the coming of the Lord. They related to James 5 and 8, where it says, The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. But I don't think for one moment Paul had it in his mind when he penned those words as a prophetical sense. 
They're for a present sense. The Lord is at hand. In fact, it can be read in two other ways. It can be read like this, the Lord is near. And there's a lovely other translation, and it puts it like this, the Lord is at thy side. Child of God this morning, here is what the Lord wants to bring to your heart. This is what the Lord wants to say to your soul. Here's something that the Lord wants to minister peace into your mind with for you to be reminded that the Lord, the Lord is at hand. Let's take this, for instance, this morning. The Lord is at hand. When you're sailing over life's stormy sea, in the stormy sea of life, the Lord is at hand. Do you remember in Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 35, the Lord Jesus said to his disciples, let us pass over unto the other side. And verse 36 says, and they took him as he was in the ship. It just means they followed him. And you know, you remember, child of God, as they followed him and as they obeyed him, Everything was going well. No sign of anything, but in verse 37, out of nowhere there arose a great storm of wind. And there's something I never saw before until I was over this with the Lord. And the thing that the Lord showed me about this whole situation in Mark 4 was this. Here was in this ship some hardened and some well-seasoned fishermen. There was men in this boat who were hardened, seasoned fishermen. And these men could have saw a storm coming. These men could have saw it in the distance. If there was any men that could have told you what was going to happen in the sea in half an hour or in an hour's time, it was these men. And as these men entered into the ship that day with the Lord Jesus, I believe the sky was blue. And I believe the sea was as clear as crystal, not a ripple. And there was nothing anywhere that showed these fishermen that there was a storm coming. It wasn't like Ophelia. Storm Ophelia, a man were to close the smith. Remember that a month ago, close the schools down, get the youngsters, at, and everybody was being warned about a storm coming. Get everybody home from work, batten down the hatches, tie down whatever you're to tie down. The whole thing's going to come to a crumble. Everybody was told of a storm coming, and every one of us was prepared for Ophelia coming. But here in Mark 4, there was no sign of anything until suddenly, out of the blue, out of nowhere, a storm comes. And I'll tell you, dear believer, life's like that. A storm can come out of nowhere. It can come as a bolt out of the blue. I had an elder of a Baptist church on the phone with me on Tuesday. I was down before the Lord getting a message for Marlene's funeral when the phone rang, and I wasn't going to answer it because I was in real good thoughts with the Lord, and I wasn't going to answer it. And something made me do it. And it was this elder. And he came onto the phone. And he wanted to talk to me about something. And he doesn't mind if I share this with you. 
just the other week ago. His son-in-law felt unwell. And went to the doctor only to discover he's got cancer. A godly lad. A bolt out of the blue. If the treatment works, he'll get a couple of years, but if it doesn't, it'll be just months. What's the Lord trying to say to us this morning? Listen, watch out, because the storms of life can come like a bolt out of the blue without warning. And as he shared this with me, and as I listened, this is what he said. He said, all we can rest with is to know that he is in the Lord's hand and that the Lord is at our hand. Couldn't believe what he said. I'm telling you, child of God, the sea might be calm this morning, no sign of anything. Mind you, the storm of life can hit. And these disciples, we read in Luke chapter 8, verse 23, we read that they were in jeopardy. And all they could see was the waves. And all they could see was the wind. And all they could see was the boat. And it says it was now full, it was more or less then, it was about to sink. And sometimes, child of God, that's all we can see. We can see the waves that threaten us. And we can see the winds that so come fiercely against us. We can see life crumbling all around us. And the one thing we fail to see is the Lord is at hand in it all. You remember when the disciples went to the hinder part of the ship, what did they learn? They learned that the Lord is at hand. And when they turned to the Lord, you remember how the Lord stood up on the boat and he said to the wind, peace, and he said to the sea, be still. And you remember there was a great calm. Listen, child of God, here's what the Lord wants you to learn. Listen. On the stormy seas of life, the Lord is at hand. He might not calm the storm for you, but he can calm you in the storm. You see, the Lord is at hand. He's at thy side on the stormy sea. You know, the Lord is at hand today. When you face, fa face the frightening foe, you remember 2 Kings chapter 8, we read then the king of Syria warred against Israel, and Elisha and his servant, they went to Dothan. And you remember the king of Syria, how they sent, therefore he sent their horses and chariots and a great host, and the whole Syrian army encamped and surrounded these two men of God. And the servant of the man of God gets up in the morning and all he can see is the chariots, all he can see is the soldiers, all he can see is the enemy. And he's frightened. And there's many believers like them this morning. And maybe this morning there's people against you in the workplace. Let me tell you this, to talk about children being bullied. There's grown-ups today, and there's Christians that get bullied in their place of work. 
And maybe there's a believer in this meeting this morning and you're being bullied at work. It's not just children that are bullied. There are a lot of grown-ups that bullied in their work, their place at work. And everyone's against them. Maybe university, maybe at school, and, and this morning you feel everyone is against you. Perhaps maybe even your family. For I mean, your families can soon turn their anger on you too. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36, the Lord Jesus said, A man's foes are they of his own household. And maybe this morning, child of God, you find yourself in a situation where you this morning are being surrounded by those who are against you. Listen this morning, there's something the Lord wants me to tell you. Where you are right now, the Lord is at hand. Oh, I, I know exactly where you are. In my previous place of employment, employment, there was two. And they'd done everything. Done everything that they could to sink me and sink the wee lad that I was with. Told everything. Said everything. And I remember getting down between the radiators one day, and I got down, and I prayed to the Lord, Lord, you know these things aren't true. And the Lord to my own mind says, I know that. You just leave it with me. And I remember the boss came up, and the boss started to investigate. And within two days, Within two days, what them two tried to pour on us ended up on their own head. And within a month they were out and they were down the road. Maybe this morning you are facing a frightening foe. You remember what you're facing, child of God, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in the family, whether it's in the home or university or school. You remember this. Take this to heart this morning. The Lord is at hand. During Stalin's Russia, 30 Christians were being persecuted and tortured in a prison. The secret police came in one day and they started counting every one of them, 30. And they went out and they said, there's 30 in here. And one of the prisoners shouted out, there's not 30, there's 31 in here, 31 of us. And the commander of the secret place says, you may go in there and count them boys again. And counted and counted and counted. No, there's only 30. There's only 30. And the fellow says to the secret place, you forgot, he says, the Lord's in here with us. There's 31 of us, including the Lord. Ah, child of God, old Henry Light. Three weeks before he died of tuberculosis, three weeks before he died, he wrote these words. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Old Henry late discovered the Lord is at hand. Listen, dear, the Lord is at hand when you're on the stormy sea. The Lord is at hand when you face the frightening foe. I'll tell you, the Lord is at hand when you're deep down in deep despair. I'll tell you, there's Christians today and they're like Elijah under the juniper tree. Do you know something? There's Christians today. There's Christians today, they're so depressed, they're so despondent, they're so deep down. 
like Elijah. They don't want to live anymore. Mind you, Elijah was a mighty man of God, wasn't he? He was a man that saw and witnessed the mighty presence and the power of God. Ah, but there's a moment come when Elijah felt himself so far down, he didn't want to live anymore. And in chapter 19 of 1 Kings, we'll find him there. He's under the juniper tree. And he says to the Lord, Lord, it is enough. Take away my life. And Christians can find themselves under the juniper tree just like anybody else. And you know, when you get down and you get discouraged and you get depressed and you get despondent, what you'll find, the devil will fill your mind with thoughts that are not true. You remember that. He'll fill your mind with thoughts that are not true. Oh, you'll think all is hopeless. You'll think I cannot carry on. You'll think the burden is unbearable. And maybe this morning, this is you this morning, you think, you think this morning, you think this morning all is hopeless. You feel you cannot carry on. You feel the burden that you're bearing is unbearable. Do you know what Elijah discovered? Elijah discovered while he was there, the Lord was at hand. Because the Lord came to him where he was. And the Lord ministered to him where he was. And the Lord brought him out of where he was. No matter where you are, child of God, you take this. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand on the stormy sea. The Lord is at hand when you face the frightening foe. The Lord is at hand when you're down deep in despair. And the Lord is at hand, I'll tell you this one, the Lord's at hand when you're feeling sorrow sting. There's some of us in this meeting, and we don't know what that feels like yet, but there's some men in this meeting, and there's some ladies do. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as of a contrite spirit. The Lord is at hand to those that sorrow. Do you remember Mary and Martha, the sorrowing sisters? Man, if anybody could feel the bitterness of bereavement and felt the grip of grief, oh, it was them too. But it was there where they learned the Lord is at, is at hand. You see, child of God, Sorrow can sting the heart, and the sorrow can sting the mind, and it's a sting that's left there. It's all right, sir, when you have your wife. It's all right, sister, when you have your husband. But when the Lord takes the wife, brother, and when the Lord takes the husband, sister, you'll know what the sting of sorrow is. Oh, friend, I remember days sitting at home with wee Sandy Heaney. 
godliest wee man. And I remember sitting many a day, and there wasn't a day that I didn't visit him. He didn't point to the card on the mantelpiece. And as soon as he'd point the, to the finger, point to the card on the mantelpiece, tears would start to come. Sorrow leaves a sting, friends. And for those who still feel that awful sting, you remember the Lord is at hand when you're there. The Lord resists the proud, but there's one thing the Lord finds it impossible. He finds it impossible today to resist the sorrowing. Joan Wilson, who lost her daughter Mary in the Inniskillen bomb 30 years ago, said one week after her death, Sorrow was so unbelievable that she didn't want to go on herself. Didn't know how she could live life without her. Until one day she felt the Lord coming very near, and she opened the Scriptures to 1 Peter verse 4. And through the Scriptures the Lord spoke to her and said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though so some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice, and to just close the Bible, I can't rejoice. And the Lord said to her, read on, read on. She says, but rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. And she turned to a hymn book, and she read these words, O aching heart with sorrow torn, thy Lord is near, he knows. He knows it all, thy feet may worn, thy weary cares and woes, the load of grief in anguish born, thy Lord is near and knows. He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows. Thy Lord is near. He knows. The Lord is at hand, brother. The Lord is at hand, sister. Whatever you're going through life at this moment, and perhaps maybe what you'll be facing this week, you don't know. You remember the Lord is at hand. He's at hand on the stormy sea. He's at hand when you face the frightening foe. He's at hand when you're in the depths of deep despair. He's ha at hand. The Lord is at hand when you feel the sorrow sting. And I'll tell you this, he's at hand when you're at death's domain. The psalmist could say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. John Wesley, in his last breath, said when he was dying, The best of all is God is with us. Whatever it be, child of God, stormy sea, frightening foe, deep despair, sorrow sting, take comfort from these words this morning. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is at thy side. He promised never to leave us, nor forsake us. The Lord is at hand. And may God bless His Word to our hearts this morning. Our